Hi, I'm Tara Littlefield, botanist at the Office of Kentucky Nature Preserves, and I'm here to tell you about the Trilliums of Kentucky. Trilliums are some of the showiest and most memorable of our spring wildflowers. It's hard to not love a trillium. This delicate little plant with its whorl of three leaves. It's really interesting flowers. Um, it's interesting and fascinating relationship with the pollinators and seed dispersers. I look forward to seeing trilliums every spring. It never gets old. Trillium is a Greek word for three, and this is a good description of many of the different parts of the plant itself. Three leaves, three petals, three sepals, two whorls of three stamens, so six total stamens, and then you've got the ovary in the middle there. Trilliums are in the Trilliaceae family. They have formerly been classified in the lily family, the Liliaceae. There are over 50 trillium species worldwide. They are found in the temperate regions in North America and Southeast Asia. Trillium diversity reaches its peak in the Southern Appalachians. Kentucky has 12 species of trillium, making it the sixth most trillium rich state in North America ranking behind Georgia, Alabama, South Carolina, Tennessee, and North Carolina. Trilliums are divided into two main groups, the sessil trilliums, whose flower sits on top of the leaf, and the pedicillate trilliums, whose flower is attached to the leaf by a short stem or stalk. Okay, so we're in the Big South Fork and we're looking for different species of trilliums, and we just came upon two different species that are good examples of the two different types of trilliums uh, that we have in Kentucky. So right here, we've got Sweet Betsy. This is what we call a sessel type trillium because the flower is sessel to the leaves right here. Um, and and, and they, they oftentimes call these types of trilliums toad shades as well because they're like little umbrellas or shades for a little toad, the size of a, of a toad. So that's another name for these, but this particular species is called Sweet Betsy. It's more common in, in, in uh, Southern Kentucky, uh, Southeast Kentucky. Um, of course, we're in the Cumberland Plateau right now. It's one of the most dominant species of trillium that you find here. Uh, sometimes they form these interesting hybrid swarms with yellow trillium on the slopes, and we're seeing that here as well. So this one's Sweet Betsy. Okay, and well, here's another different species that we have right here. This one is called the Southern Red Trillium. And this type of trillium, you see how the flower is on a stalk? We call this a pedicillate, uh, the, the pedicel, um, pedicillate trilliums. So, you know, you have the sessel type trilliums with the flower and then the stalked or pedicillate trillium. So this was the southern red trillium, and we've actually got a treat right here because it's actually being pollinated by these little flies. So if we got up close to this, it would smell pretty strong. I smelled another one that was being pollinated. This doesn't smell as stinky as the trillium erectum. So this is the southern red trillium, trillium sulcatum. Um, and it is endemic to the Southern Appalachians. The sessile flowered trilliums in Kentucky are sessil trillium, trillium sessile, sweet betsy, trillium cuneatum, yellow trillium, trillium luteum, twisted trillium, trillium staminium, and prairie trillium, trillium recurvatum. The pedicillate flowering trilliums in Kentucky are stinking benjamin, trillium erectum, which has two varieties, variety albidum and variety erectum, the southern red trillium, trillium sulcatum, bent or nodding trillium, trillium flexipes, the great white trillium, Trillium grandiflorum, snow trillium, trillium nivali, painted trillium, 
trillium undulatum, and the least trillium, trillium pusillum. While the pattern of threes for trilliums can seem quite simple, trilliums are actually really complex in many ways, like their pollination strategies that use different smells to track flies, gnats, bees, and beetles. And similar to other spring wallflowers, their seed dispersal relationship with ants and yellow jackets that are attracted to the oily fat eliasome substance on the trillium seeds that ultimately leads to their distribution across natural areas. Several trillium species can form hybrid populations, like the sweet Betsy and yellow trillium hybrids, and genetic abnormalities can sometimes lead to quadrilliums, leaves, petals, and sepals with whorls of four instead of three. My family and I are trying to see as many trilliums as we can in a few days on spring break. Let's see how many we can find. I love trilliums because I love to take a hike and just see all the trilliums. And I wanna, I like to see all different types of trilliums because they're like all really beautiful and all unique colors and they all have their different smells and I just wanna smell them all. Hi, I'm Estella, and I'm at the Rough River Gorge. We have found a bent trillium here, and and uh, it had a uh, normally trillium. Uh, the bent trillium hangs under the leaves, and it's hanging under the leaves right now. And notice that the the whole flower is white, even the pistils and the stamens. And uh, it is a stalk trillium is a stop trillium and so I'm going to see what it smells like. It smells like kind of sweeter, sweeter than uh, this other trillium and it f smells like rotting flesh. Um, hi, we are looking at bent trilliums and this one is white. And what does it smell like? It smells like kind of honeysuckle-ish, but it I'm gonna here to talk about ants. And ants like ants and bee bees and flies like to pollinate these and and they do a really good job because they are for wildlife. And you'll see me on my next video. All right, so we just found the Cecil Trillium. And this is the one that we've been looking for. It's supposed to have kind of a, a rotting carcass smell. Uh, musky uh, kind of smell uh, to attract fly pollinators. Uh, so we're really excited about this one um, and we're gonna smell it. So I am going to smell it and really see if it smells like rotting flesh. It smells like rotting flesh. It smells gross. My name is Estella. I'm at the Big South Fork, and I found a population of trilliums. This is a trillium, and it's really big, and it's called the Sweet Betsy uh, trillium. And so, if you smell it, it smells sweet. Uh, then uh, this other trillium, it smells like rotting meat and rotting fruit because it has to attract flies. That's what pollinates it. But this smells sweet because it gets the name from it. I don't really think it smells sweet. I think it smells like frankincense. Bye. What do you think, Henry? Uh, I think it kind of smells like fruit. Hi, I am Estella. I'm at the Big South Fork, 
and I have found a population of yellow trilliums. Uh, I it gets its name from the yellow, the yellow uh, petals, and I think it it gets its name be from the yellow because like because it like well just like uh, a lemon, it's yellow and it smells sour, like a lemon if you smell it, and I kind of think. It smells more sugary lemonade, not just lemon. All right, so we've just found our six trillium. We're in the Rough River area in Grayson County, and we're on this limestone slope, and we've found the Prairie Trillium. And it's Trillium recurvatum, and what's unique about this trillium is that the sepals curve downward. That's where uh, the, the, the species re recurvatum is referring to. Um, and all the other trilliums, they, they stick up and they're more petal-like. Uh, three petals, and then the leaves actually kind of reduce, the, the, in, in the petiole reduces to the, to the stem. So really exciting. And um, it doesn't really have much of a scent. Let's see if, uh, let's smell it, Henry. It doesn't smell it. Oh, really? It doesn't smell at all because it's pollinated by beetles that are only attracted to the cover. We were able to find six trilliums across the Cumberland Plateau and Shawnee Hills regions. Thanks for joining us on this hike. We hope you get a chance to see some trilliums this spring, and don't forget to get up close and smell them. It will help you identify them and figure out what kinds of pollinators they are trying to attract.